Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Happy Easter. We're going to do uh, a study on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's good to be with you. Love to everybody out there. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for your blessings, dear God. And we give you the prayers and the glory and the honor. And Father God, I pray that you might bless your word today. Minister it to us, Lord, in your name and for your glory. May each one of us know your love and grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good to be with you. And we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you'd like to get your Bibles, please. Um, it's no good listening to the preacher if you're not going to pray. check what the preacher is saying. Always check. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <coughs> I preach this at the Haywood Reform Fellowship. And uh, I hope you're going to be blessed by it. It's a Bible study now, but it was a sermon uh, today that I preached. Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first, for all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of the sea fast then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as if one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not, sorry, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Ye and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then the also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, and by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as an Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the fair fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at the coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God even to the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power, and he must reign, till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at, at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if he did rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some of the knowledge of God, I speak this to your shame. For some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Uh, with what body do they come? 
Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quicker, except it die. And what, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not, that the body that shall be, but bear grain, it, it, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body, as it had pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another fishes, and another, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption, it is, rain in, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown as a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Sorry about that. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall leave, put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's good to be with you. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to preach this, so it's not really a Bible study. It's more of a sermon. So I'm going to preach it, so forgive me if I'm preaching. I'm, I'm a bit tired because I've I'm doing a heck of a lot of evangelism at the moment. I'm I'm out, all, you know, most of the days, and I'm spending hours and hours preaching, hours and hours evangelizing, and I'm just really, really tired. So, uh, forgive me if I'm not at my full best. And uh, you know, I encourage you to pray for me. Encourage, pray for the guys that come out with me, and and uh, you know, so I really value your prayers. I've had a lot of equipment to carry, and uh, I've had speaker and table and chair and all sorts. So I look like a pack horse, and coming home uh, off the tram sometimes, uh, people have been really kind carrying stuff. The public have carried stuff for me, so that's been good. So just going to pray for the Lord's blessing. Lord, we just come before you today, Lord. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about you. And Lord, I just pray that you bring glory to your name through these words. And Father, I pray you'd seal it to people's hearts. And Father, I just pray that you'd use this message to encourage people in their faith. And I pray that those who, who don't know you will come to will come to know you, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. I'll just be with you one second. I've just got to uh, just just one second.
go to six. So, so, yeah, my auntie just come in. She told me to have a rest, but I'm uh, going to get on. Prepared this sermon this morning, studied it this morning, preached it in the afternoon, and now I'm giving it to you. So let's let's just pray again. Father, we we just give you the prayers uh, and the glory today. Lord, we acknowledge you are our God. We bow before you today. You are our God. We stand under the cross, under your blood today. We are washed in the blood, clean in the blood. We know your mercies. We know your grace. Oh, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Bless all those that hear this message today. Lord, may you empower me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, may you be lifted up. May you be honored, Lord. Lord, please take these words and seal them to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> there have been many conspiracy theories, excuse me, <laughs> there have been many, many conspiracy theories concerning the Bible and especially concerning the resurrection you'll find many people talk about that the idea of the resurrection is a myth that it was created by the early church a hundred years or even 50 years after the event and that they there were these conspiracy theories um, the early church kind of making the myth so one writer says one the atheist uh, the later legends built on them. Later legends built on them. Uh, a Dr. Stephen Patterson, an atheist in 1998, talks about the ecclesiastical church uh, had made, uh, made this story up. The Muslims don't believe in the resurrection. They believe that Jesus uh, didn't even die. And... Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the resurrection. They believe that it was a, a kind of, that he was Jesus was resurrected as a kind of spirit being. But the Bible teaches differently. We turn to one Corinthians fifteen, verse four, and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Verse thirteen. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. And verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So the scriptures quite clearly teach that Christ rose from the dead. So it doesn't matter what Islam thinks. It doesn't matter what the skeptics think. It doesn't matter, about, doesn't matter what the uh, conspiracy theories are going around. It, it's what the word of God teaches, my friend. 
It's what the Word of God teaches. And the Word of God teaches that Christ rose from the dead. Now, it's interesting to note um, that It's interesting to note, <laughs> excuse me, that the gospel is that Christ died, took the wrath that we deserved, and rose again. That is the gospel, my friends. That is the gospel that di Christ died and rose again. But very often in the church, we only preach half a gospel. We preach that Christ died. That's true that he died, but he not only died, he rose again. Now, in the early church, they preached the resurrection often. And, you know, in the church today, we don't preach the resurrection as much as we should. In Acts chapter 2, verse 24, whom God hath raised up, having loosened the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Acts chapter 3, verse 15, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, wherein we are witnesses. Acts chapter 4, verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do, do the man stand before you all. So the early church, the early church, the early church believed, sorry, are you making a cup of tea? She's making a cup of tea. All right, make your cup of tea then if you want to make. Sorry, so we've got someone making a cup of tea and making noise, background noise. Forgive the background noise. <laughs> My aunt has been busy all day today, so she needs a cup of tea. We've had people in from what time? Uh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I bet all the apple pies, she's, she's wondering where all the apple pies gone. Sorry, we'll get back into the sermon now. Sorry for the interruption. So the early church believed in the resurrection. It was the central pinnacle they, they preach the death and the resurrection and us as a church in churches today we don't preach often that Christ rose from the dead and that was central to gospel preaching so I've got uh, four points uh, that I want to bring before you today number one the doctrine of the resurrection if you like to turn to verse one the doctrine of the resurrection uh, verse one moreover brethren I'll just wait till my auntie leaves because she's distracting me. <laughs> Sorry about this. Okay, thank you. So, sorry about that. She was coming and making a brew and stuff. And then I ate all the apple pie and she was wondering where it all gone. <laughs> okay, uh that's life though isn't it it's good to, to have a bit of life anyhow 1 corinthians chapter 15 the, the doctrine of the resurrection moreover verse 1 moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand they stood they stood on a doctrine you know many people today say this they go you know we, we, we don't need doctrine we don't need teaching we just feel it we just feel it no the Bible teaches a doctrine of the resurrection. They stood, notice this, I preached unto you which you have received and were in you stand. They stood on the doctrine of the resurrection. You know, people don't like to hear that. They don't like to hear that there's doctrines that we have to stand for, teaching that we have to make a stand for. You know, it's kind of like, would you put up with a, a traffic warden? Uh, you know, we have traffic wardens in the UK. Uh, a lady would have a, a a big stick and on the top of it would say stop. And then on the other side of this big circle, it would say go. What if what if the traffic warden stuck and said go and the little kids coming out of the school saw it go and, and there were lorries going down the road and they 
walked into the road and got knocked over by the lorries. You wouldn't put up with that lie, go, when they, knew, when they shouldn't be going. And, and so truth, uh, error, is dangerous because it tells people it destroys truth. And, and, and it's dangerous. You know, Paul uh, never shunned to stand for the gospel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ, which unto of Christ unto another gospel. He was concerned that they were going away from the gospel. They were going away from the gospel. So what's the implication of this? Well, we, we can't hide the truth. You know, we can't hide the gospel. So many people today are hiding the gospel. You know, there's so many people today in the church of Jesus Christ, in churches that claim to be gospel churches, that are not proclaiming the gospel. That's wrong. There are so many people today who are making it up as they go along. There are many, many Christians today, even who name the name of the gospel, who will make up their own message, who will make it up as they go along. For example, the health and well gospel. That if you put money, if you buy a, a handkerchief off some big pastor in America, you're going to get healed. That's making it up as you go along. That's nothing to do with the Bible. So many people are making it up and not standing on the pure word of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, this is the kind of heart. This is the kind of heart that you need to have. For this cause also that we, sorry, for this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believeth. The Thessalonian church received the word of God. They received it humbly and meekly. We need to do that. We need to be people who receive the word of God. We need to be people who receive sound doctrine in a humble way. In a humble way. So many Christians argue and argue and, and argue about things that they shouldn't be arguing about. We have to receive the truth in humility and proclaim the truth, the resurrection of Christ, the doctrine of the resurrection. Verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. By which also you are saved, do you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain? By which also you are saved. You are saved. You are saved. You know, I love peanut butter sandwiches. Um, every now and again, once every three or four months, I might go and just buy a big jar of peanut butter. And I bring it home, and I get some bread, and I make loads and loads and loads and loads of peanut butter, and I just eat them. And I love peanut butter sandwiches. Now, I could argue with you all day about the scientific constituents and makeup of peanut butter sandwiches. But until you've tasted a peanut butter sandwich, you are never, ever going to know how it tastes. And I could argue all day long about the resurrection. I could argue all day long about the Christian faith. I could give you stacks of evidence and show you loads of evidence. But until you tasted the Lord, you will never know God. Christianity is not just doctrine. It is doctrine. Do not deny doctrine, but it's not only doctrine, it is life. It is an experience. In John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. They received, but as many as received him, they received him, took him into him, came into relationship with him. They become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You become a son, a daughter of God as you believe in Christ. I love this, Romans 5, 2. two by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You see, you can go to church. 
you can go to church you can go to church and you can uh, for years and years and years you can be born in a Christian family you can you can read good Christian books but it doesn't mean to say you know God until you have an experience of God until God convicts you of your sin until you come to see the beauty of Christ the wonder of Christ and, and, and you need to know Christ in your experience not just in your head but you need both I remember Charles Spurgeon the great Baptist preacher and he was brought up in a home that was a Christian home and he was brought up in on the Puritans he knew the Puritans he knew the Word of God but he didn't know God until one day he walked into a Methodist chapel and there was a cook who read a passage and and it was something like look be you saved and he was touched and the op God opened his eyes and he had an experience an encounter with the living God Romans 5 2 by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God have you come into a saving relationship with Jesus has your heart been opened up have you seen your sin have you come to trust in Christ and rest in him and only him not in anything else but to rest on the beautiful Lord to rest on the beautiful Savior to rest on our King to rest on our God to rest in Jesus Christ are you resting in him and only him today <coughs> that is salvation when you realize your own deeds are filthy rags when you realize that you cannot save yourself when you cast yourself wholly upon the cross wholly upon the Lord then you've experienced salvation and you know God thirdly the evidence of the resurrection verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve and after that he was seen of the above five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep after that he was seen of James then of all the apostles and last of all he was seen of me also of one born out of due time for I am the least of the apostles that I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly that they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me you know there are many people today that will ask this question they will say you know people who see these aliens and or people who say they've seen UFOs what's the difference between their testimony and the Bible testimony or the disciples testimony that they say that Jesus rose from the dead what's the difference there's no difference it's all a pack of lies that's what they say excuse me <clears throat> that's what they say well what's the reply to that Anthony flew an atheist uh, uh, sorry a deist but he was the world's most prominent atheist at the time when he wrote this he was a prominent atheist when he wrote this and he said this the evidence for the resurrection is better than for any claim in uh, in claim claimed miracles in any other religion it's outstandingly different in quantity and quality that's an atheist at the time he wrote that so my three planks of evidence for the resurrection first of all the scriptures verse 3 and 4 for I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures the scriptures point to the resurrection of Christ now for a skeptic that will not convince them but it's important to remember that the scriptures point to the resurrection of Christ because whatever is the truth it has to come before the old uh, come after the Old Testament the Old Testament has to point to the to, to what is the truth and the Old Testament points to the New Testament and the Muslims come and they just come from nowhere the Mormons come they just come from nowhere the Jehovah's Witnesses just come from nowhere but we're not coming just from anywhere 
we're coming and standing on the Old Testament, and the Old Testament clearly states about the death and resurrection of Christ. In Isaiah 53, verse 3, we read these words. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. That's the death. Then verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make the soul an offering for sin, he shall see a seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Sorry about that, the mic came out. He shall see a seed. There is a, 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 an implicit, not explicit, but an implicit statement about the resurrection of Christ there. A prophecy. Secondly, the script, first the scripture. Secondly, eyewitness accounts. Verse 15, let's go back to, to our passage. Amen. Amen. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5 and 7. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren, once of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And that last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So, here... There are these people who saw the Lord, Cephas, James, the other apostles. They were eyewitnesses. Now, the reason why the women are not mentioned here is this, uh, it's about seniority. It's showing that these are the senior people within the church, mainly, yeah? <coughs> That's what it's saying. That's why the names of Cephas and the others are mentioned. But originally, it was the women that saw the resurrection. So if anyone says there's a discrepancy there, that's the reason why. Okay, but here's the point. Number one, the quality of these people. When these people say, uh, well, we don't believe the, the early church resurrection story because, you know, people could say they've seen um, UFOs. So what's the difference? Well, name me uh, some of these people who have seen UFOs and can they match this? John was thrown into boiling hot oil from head to toe James was thrown off the temple mount Peter was crucified upside down and Paul was thrown to the lions name me one person who says they have seen UFOs and gone through those experiences secondly the quality of these people's lives they never lied they, they were good people they never lied they did good and here's the question of all questions. Tell me now why these disciples and apostles, if they were deluded or lying, why they would go to Jerusalem to preach the gospel? If they were deluded, they could have been shown to be deluded. The Sahindrin and the Roman soldiers could have brought out the dead body and shown it to the people and would have ended Christianity on the spot. Or, if they, not deluded, but if they were lying, the Roman authorities could have brought the body out or the Sahendrin and proved them wrong. Because they were in Jerusalem, and the body was in Jerusalem, and they could have done that. But they didn't. Why? Because he rose from the dead. Dale Allison, one of the great scholars of our time, he's not a... Uh, a evangelical born again believer but one of the great scholars uh, at Princeton Seminary and uh, a great mighty mighty scholar I mean there's no doubt about it he is he's probably one of the best scholars uh, on historical Jesus studies he doesn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead but he did a study on eyewitness accounts in the law courts and what he found is that the general ethos was that Eyewitnesses generally got it right on the big picture, but on the minutiae they would differ a bit. They were they were not not particularly correct. Now, for us, that's the picture we get with the New Testament. There is this general picture of the death and resurrection, and all four Gospels agree on it. 
There are minor differences, not that they're incorrect, but it shows real life. It shows that that's the way it would be. If, they, if it wasn't true, they would have colluded and it would have matched perfectly. And, and that would have been because they they'd, they'd kind of doctored it. They're kind of trying to kid us. But because it's hard to match it sometimes, not that there are any discrepancies because the word of God is uh, inerrant, without error. But there are difficulties to try and harmonize. And uh, that's a proof of the, of the truth of it because it shows you um, that they've not colluded. They've not got together and made this up. Sorry about this. So you've, we've looked at scripture, we've looked at, we've looked at um, uh, eyewitnesses, and then enemy attestation. 1 Corinthians 15, 8, 9. Uh, and last of all, he was seen of me, also one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. So Paul was an enemy of the gospel, yet he got saved and born again, and it testified to the resurrection. Now... It doesn't matter if you've got a PhD from Harvard. It doesn't matter if you've got a PhD at Oxford. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest physicist the world has ever seen, the greatest biologist, the greatest thinker, whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to deal with Paul's testimony. You have to ask your question, do you agree with him or not? Do you know why? Because he's influenced the West more than anybody. He's had a massive influence on Western thought, and you cannot just ignore him. You have to say, do I agree with him? Or do I disagree with him? He's saying that he saw the resurrection. Charles Spurgeon says, If Jesus rose, then the gospel is what it professes to be. If he rose not from the dead, then it is all deceit and delusion. It says, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And you are yet in your sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 17. So finally, the fourth point, the fruit of the resurrection. A key verse here is verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. I was in Man preaching in Manchester and a, an atheist lady came up to me and she was rather upset. I was asking this question. What will you do if you die, when you die? What will you do when you die? What will you do when you die? I kept asking that question to people. And I said, we have a hope. There is a hope in Christ. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And this woman came up to me, and she was rather upset. I said, well, if you're saying that, what if people are dying? What if they've got children dying? How can you say those qu that question? And I said to her, are you an atheist? She said, yes. I said, well, you've got no hope. I, I how can you complain? I'm offering hope. I'm offering hope because people can be resurrected in Christ. And we have a hope, friends, that we have a hope today. You need to know that as a Christian. Death has been conquered. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 26. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man is his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Is death. The Lord conquered death. All the skeptics are in the ground. Muhammad's in the ground. Buddha's in the ground. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And what do the skeptics have to offer? If there is no resurrection of Christ, it's for tomorrow, eat, drink, and for tomorrow we die. There's a story of the ancient Egyptians. They used to carry a coffin at a, at a feast when they were having a party. And they would carry a coffin and they, they would have an image of a man in it. And what they were saying is, we're all going to die, so enjoy yourself. That's skepticism for you. But we're saying, no, we die and we rise again. We have conquered death. Christ conquered death for us. So the fruits of the resurrection is, is the death. Now, it conquered death. Now, it's interesting to note that 
that Christ was risen on barley harvest. Now, barley harvest was after the um, was after the Passover, and what they would do is they would take some uh, uh, some uh, sheaves or some fruit of the f first fruit of the harvest before the full harvest had come. They take it and they would wave the sheaves in the ceremony to say, "This is po look, we've got some of the fruit of the harvest, but there's more of the harvest coming." And so Christ rising from the dead is the first fruits, is the first fruits of, of, of all that's going to happen when we believe in him and trust in him and rise with him. Hallelujah. And so the fruit of the resurrection, death is conquered. Secondly, all cosmic enemies are destroyed. And so we read that in 1 Corinthians 15, 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. All things are going to be subject to him because he has conquered all evil. You can read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. But notice, if you remember Ephesians chapter 6, it says, we wrestle not against principalities, but of powers. You know, there is a cosmic dimension. And Christ not only dealt with our sin, but he dealt with this cosmic dimension. These evil entities were destroyed at the cross and the resurrection. And what that teaches us is that we're not just, it's not all about us. History is not just about us. There's bigger things at stake that have been going on in history that we don't fully understand. This cosmic element of the gospel. And then thirdly, not only uh, do we conquer death, not only are the cosmic, cosmic uh, evil forces destroyed, but also, fi finally, we get a glorified body in 1 Corinthians 15.42. 1 Corinthians 15.42. We read, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So we get a new body. We, we get a glorified body. You know, it's not the end. When we die, we get a glorified body. Contrast that to skepticism. Here's skepticism for you. This is Richard Dawkins. Compare what we have. Death conquered. The cosmic forces destroyed. A new glorified body. That is what we get as we trust in Christ. What do we get if we follow skepticism? What do we get if we follow a man like Richard Dawkins? Here is what he says. The universe we observe as pre precisely the properties we should expect if there is at bottom no design, no evil, no good, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. Nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. Pity the skeptic, my friends. Pity the skeptic, for they don't have any hope. They really don't have any hope. And it's very, very sad. In conclusion. Sorry about this. In conclusion, Muhammad Ali got Alzheimer's and coming to the uh, coming to the end of his life, coming coming to the end of his uh, great life, he looked at he he went into a barn and he saw all his trophies and he realized that his glory had faded. And you know we're going to die one day. We're going to come to that place where all glory is faded, where we're going to come to our last breath. And we might have to face the loss of a loved one. And we may have faced the loss of a loved one. And the pain is there. We might have to face illness. We might even have to feel, uh, face people who have a critical opinion of us. And if we do, we've got to remember this. That we've got to remember this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, therefore, my beloved, 
Brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It doesn't matter if they criticize you. It doesn't matter if they look down on you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. It doesn't matter if you're in pain. It doesn't matter if you've lost loved ones. It doesn't matter if you're battered, pink, to blue, to bleeding, whatever it is. You need to know you've got to hope when you die, you're going to rise again, brother and sister. You're going to rise again in a glorified body. You're going to rise again, defeated your e the evil that is in the world. You're going to rise again because you've defeated death. You're going to rise again because you've got a glorified body. You have got a glorious future ahead of you. And this life is meaningful. If there is no resurrection, it is pitiful. If there is no resurrection, there is no hope. But because there is a resurrection, you have a glorious hope, my friend. And so you must Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My friend, as a Christian, you must labor for the Lord. You must serve him. You must do what you can for the kingdom. You must do what you are called to do by God. You must live not for this world, but for the world to come. You must have a passion for Jesus. You must have a passion for the gospel. You must have a passion to serve the Lord because there is a death and a resurrection. There is a resurrection to life or a resurrection to death. Death as in hell. The Bible doesn't believe, it does not believe, my friend, it does not teach universalism. There are passages here, like verse 28, may you all, uh, God may be all in all, that does not teach universalism. No, it says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes on him, it's, it's your belief, it's your faith on Christ. And if you don't have that faith, you're lost. You're lost. Oh, you're so lost. You've got no hope. You've got no future. You've got nothing. If you don't trust in Christ, my friend. Turn to Philippians uh, chapter 3, verse 10 and 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 12. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He presses on. He presses on, my friends. He presses on. Press on. So much to do for the Lord. There's so much to serve Him. Do not get down. Do not get discouraged. But press on. Press on. There is a resurrection to come. There is a glorious resurrection with a glorious body to come for you as you trust in the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, you're going to be lost forever. You're going to be lost for eternity. You will be lost. It is not like Dawkins said, you're going to die and that's it. No. You'll be lost forever. Lost. Without God. Without salvation. Shut out into darkness forever and ever. But if you trust Him, if you look to Him, you'll be gloriously saved and have a glorious future. So turn to the Lord today. Just if you want to do a little study on the topic, have a look at these verses when I finished and do a little meditation and study on the 
implications of the resurrection. The resurrection proves the divinity of Christ, Romans 1.4. The resurrection shows the sovereignty of Christ, Romans 14.9. The resurrection shows that we are justified in Christ, Romans 4.25. The resurrection shows that we are born again, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And the resurrection in, of Christ means that we will be resurrected, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55 to 57. So we've come to the end. I'm very, very tired. And uh, forgive me if, uh, if I'm not preaching the best at my best. And, and uh, God bless you on that. So let, let's pray. It's good to be with you today. And uh, God is good. Let's see if I can find a hymn. See, 52, 52, 52. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Oh, fear is gone, because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone, because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's fight, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I know he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone, because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. God bless you. It's good to be with you. I'm going to pray and then close. I'm going to rest then. God bless you. Love you all. Love to everybody out there. Take care and God bless. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the joy of salvation. We thank you for the joy of the resurrection, that death has been conquered, demons have been destroyed. And Lord, we're going to get a glorified body. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful God. Hallelujah. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, a wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there's power, power, a wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is peace, peace, a wonder-working peace. 
in the blood of the Lamb. There is peace, peace, a wonder working peace in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Lord, I pray. For the people who heard this message today, comfort them, encourage them, refresh them, strengthen them, and may they know your love today. May they know your grace today. May they know your peace today. Bless them, Lord, in your name. Bless them, Lord, for your glory. May they know your joy. May they know your peace. May they know your love. Speak to them, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope you have had a good day. Happy Easter to everybody out there. And God bless you. Keep in the word of God. Keep in the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you the word of God. But keep in the word of God. Press on in the word of God. Go forward in the word of God. Make a stand for the word of God in your generation. God bless you. Take care and God bless. I'm going to end now. And thank you for listening. And love to everybody out there. Pray for me that God would anoint me daily. Pray for me that God would use me as I evangelize. Pray for me that my enemies would be taken down, whoever they are. Pray for me that God would use me to bless people with the word of God. May God bless you. Have a lovely day. And I hope to see you again sometime. God bless.